I'm Kathy Dowdy from Material Obsession. Today I want to talk to you for a little bit about uh, a new kind of quilt making, which is actually one of the oldest kinds of quilt making, paper piecing with hexagons, triangles, and diamonds. I've recently, re I've recently produced a product with CNT Publishing called Hex Essentials. They are viewing and cutting templates that come in a variety of sizes. This particular packet is called the Small Viewers and they have the half inch, five eighth, three quarter, and one inch templates inside. Why would you want to use these? Well, for one thing, they make fussy cutting your fabric very simple. By moving the template around your fabric, you can identify the very special aspects of the fabric that will make your hexagons look really, really interesting. The other thing is that because they're made of acrylic, or acrylic plastic, you can very easily and very accurately cut your shapes. So I've got them in the small sizes, which would be very appealing to the more traditional hexagon makers. I also have them in the one and a half inch size. So the one and a half inch size has the hexagon, the diamond, and the triangle. All sizes fit together very accurately. And I also have the two and a half inch size, which is a very big, very dramatic, very quick and easy size to work with. Uh, that might be my personal favorite. So, hexagons are one of the most tried and true, tested ways to make a quilt. They've been around forever and ever. I've recently come across them because even though I would probably be most known for using very bold, very contemporary fabrics in a really fast, quick cut way, I've now discovered that there are times in my life when I really want to work slowly. I want to work with the fabrics and find the special little intricacies of the pattern that make my quilts look really, uh, that draw the eye and make my quilts look really interesting. So today, what I've done is I've gathered some of the supplies that we need to work with the uh, with hexagons, and I'll go through all of, all of those, and then we're going to look at a couple of different things that we can do with fabric. So what do we need when we want to make a hexagon quilt? Well, let's start with a packet of my hex essentials. I'm going to use the one and a half inch size today to demonstrate for you. But regardless of which size you want, you're going to want to collect the papers that you need to make your quilt. So papers are so the hexagon papers are sold in packets and by size. So for example, this one is the two and a half inch size hexagon, which means that if I was using the two and a half inch set, the papers would fit right inside the, the space of the hexagon template. The size refers to the length of the hexagon, not to any other dimension of the hexagon, it's the length of the outside. So this side and this particular one is one and a half, one and a half, one and a half, all for all six sides. Another really handy and very revolutionizing tool that we use when we're working with hexagons is a glue pen. This one was recently released by Sue Daly. It's pink, so it's quite pretty, and it also matches this little turntable, which is not an essential, but I have to say that I have one and I really love using it. The top spins, it keeps my work very centered in front of me, and it just makes it just a little bit easier to manage working around the different sides of the hexagon because I can spin it as I go. The glue pen we use on the back of the fabric, and I'll demonstrate this one, I've cut one for you, and we just run the glue pen around the outside edges of the hexagon so that we can flip the fabric over and glue it to the paper. What that means is we no longer need to baste the fabric, either through the papers or even through the corners, in order to make the fabric stay on the papers until they're sewn into the quilt. When we're quilting, it's always important to use good needles. Um, if you are what a, a needle woman and have, are very experienced with sewing, you might want to try a, a number 10. Personally, I, um, I wouldn't consider myself to be a very natural sewer. I came to this late in life, and I have, well, I'm sort of uncoordinated with my hands, so I like using a Milner's needle, which is the same size hole, but it's a very long needle and it's quite sturdy because I tend to grip my needle very strongly and in times can possibly bend it. So I, I like the Milner's needles, but um, I use this size tens as well. I also use Aurifil thread and in a neutral color. So I've threaded a needle 
before. And now I'm just going to give that thread a little bit of a tug. And actually that's way too long, so I'm going to wind some of that back on there. Just want it to be just, just sort of the length of, the, of my forearm so that it, um, it doesn't tangle and, and also so that it uh, doesn't wear out before I'm finished sewing the, length, the hexagons together. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a tug. And when I do that, what it does is release the memory of the cotton at, that's caused from it being wound onto the spool. You'll notice that I didn't thread my needle on camera. <laughs> okay, so now my needle's ready to go. And I'm going to just look at a couple different kinds of fabrics and a couple of things that you might not think about when you think about hexagons until you actually get a little bit of experience. It's quite simple to take a piece of fabric and just trim off a manageable size strip and use the hexagon, the, the hexagon template as a guide and start cutting around the outside edges. I now have the perfect size fabric to go with my one and a half inch paper template. So I'll simply place the paper onto the fabric, onto the wrong side of the fabric, use my glue pen, and run a thin line around the outside edges. Then I just take my finger and fold and press the fabric down over the glue, working my way around the hexagon. until it's completely covered. It's very tidy. And then I'll just put that down and do a series of hexagons, as many as I need to make whatever design that I've chosen. If that was using the fabric in a random cut, just from a strip of fabric, but say I want to fussy cut, which means I want to capture a specific element of the fabric to repeat um, for dramatic effect, or to run lines through my design, or uh, whatever effect I want to do. Um, and I've chosen this paisley fabric to demonstrate the fussy cutting. Now what I, what I would do initially is, I'll hold this up so you can see it, is run my template around the fabric to see what happens. So as I move it, I'm capturing specific parts of that design and wondering, do I like the way that works with this size template and in whatever position I'm going to be using it. So for me, right now, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, oh, this is quite interesting to have three heads of the paisleys sitting inside the viewing area of the template. So if I decide that's where I want to go, I've devised another quick and easy way to capture that design in a way that I can repeat it as well. What I've done is taken a piece of template plastic and cut out a piece that would fit within the acrylic space of the template, and I've just taped it onto the back of my uh, viewing template. So now, when I put my fabric down where I want to go, where I want to do the design that I want to capture, I can just quickly take a pencil and draw around the edge of the design that I want to be inside the template. And I don't have to be too terribly careful about that, but now I've marked where I want that to go. And then I can just run my rotary around the outside of that template. moved a little bit, but never fear, just reposition. And you do have a little bit of leeway. It's the, the acrylic gives you enough seam allowance to be able to cover the papers, but if you're out by an eighth of an inch, it's not going to make any difference. Okay, 
Now I'll just move the fabric away. Oops. We cut a lot of fabric at material obsession. Our rotaries are always uh, a little bit dull. Okay, so now I've cut this particular one, and I want to find another one exactly the same as that one. So I'm going to put my fabric back down, and I'm going to slide my my template around until I find the exact same positioning of the fabrics, which I've just found. And it's interesting because when you do this, you'll note that sometimes the repeat isn't as obvious as you thought it might be, or maybe it's a little bit more obvious, but you might just need to um, move it around a few times until you figure out where it's supposed to go. And when you do, you repeat and repeat and repeat until you have the number of um, hexagons that you need for your particular design. I've made this um, design here using the one and a half inch templates and with a bit of fussy cutting. But I've also used some spots and some plaids in here because I, I, I think that it's quite interesting to use linear effect in some of the, the, well in this case, some of the diamonds. I like the way that line sort of frames this particular design. And I fussy cut from um, a paisley print and repeated that pattern around the center and then randomly cut the other um, paisley. So you have both options. You can use your template to fussy cut or you can use it just to cut straight from strips. This was just um, a medallion that I made and then applicated onto a pillowcase, which I think will look brilliant, just thrown on, on a bed. The viewing templates actually allow us to um, look at fabric that we might have collected over the years in different ways. I mean, this is not one that would necessarily jump out as being great for hexagons, but you know, if I, I take my template and start moving it around the fabric, I can start to see interesting shapes developing that would look very good in a repeat fashion. I can also say, okay, well, if I'm using this one and a half inch, that's what it's going to look like, but maybe I want to consider, if I'm using the big ones, what does that look like? Where do I want to, what part of this design do I want to capture? Now, in saying that, you'd also want to consider where your flat edges will be in your pattern or where your points might be. For example, here, if I'm setting my hexagon with um, the points running up and down, I would capture a design that would look a bit like that. But if I turn it on the flat side, it'll look a little bit differently. Um, that would be more obvious if we were using a fabric, say, for example, like this Anna Maria Horner, where if I, you, know, you could capture that circle right smack in the middle or have it run across half of the flat side or perhaps you'd want to capture some of the flowers. So there are lots of things to consider when you're looking at the fabric. What kinds of, how can you use it in the same way or how can you use it differently to create different effects? Using the big um, template is also really good when you're using, um, say for example, K facet fabrics. I've used a few of his fabrics along with some other, um, with Amy Butler or whatever, to um, capture, mostly in this case I'm capturing color. The center of the flower to me is always yellow or orange or a warm color. So I've used something that's yellow inside and then used a, um, a fussy cut triangle around the outside in a strong contrasting purple and then contrasted again with the green and also fussy cut um, the little motifs around the outside. Um, in this particular um, star flower here, I just used color and didn't fussy cut anything. And in this particular one, I used um, the blue stripe and fussy cut along the stripes and alternated the more dominant green with the more dominant purple just to give it a little bit of effect. So this was a really simple little project for a cop quilt. The um, hexagon stars are made and then applicated onto a background, and then I just machine quilted the background. So it was really, in essence, only a couple of hours work to put it all together, and it's, it looks quite cute. So I'd like to suggest that if you're not already addicted to hexagons, you have a look. They're a great activity for when you're sitting and watching television or chatting amongst your friends. It's um, It can be considered to be mindless, but it's also very entertaining and a really satisfying project. If you like that and you haven't seen my book, Adding Layers, Color Design and Imagination, this is my most recent product, or my most recent book produced by um, CNT Product or CNT Publishing, so you might want to pick that up. 
and have a look at the fun projects. I talk a lot about fabric and using templates in my books to make your quilting experience fun and easy to get wonderful results. So we look forward to talking to you again about other products.